let me begin recording and now we can we can talk about this sweet sweet program so uh do you need 2.83 alpha no you don't 2.82 absolutely works the only difference between 2.82 and 2.83 is that it has a little bit uh, more with like a little a few tools that deal with cloth sculpting, but I'll get into that um, later. For now, we just, it, it, it's fine. Uh, both versions are, are very close to each other. So Blender, free program, really powerful, used in uh, many different industries. Uh, drawbacks of Blender are that it doesn't use NURBS uh, based geometry, it only works with meshes and, uh, well, it works with voxels as well, but it, it works with meshes, right? So everything that you import needs to be a mesh and everything that you export, you will get a mesh, which means you can, without any problems, 3D print stuff that comes out of Blender. You can see in CNC mill uh, stuff that comes out of Blender, but when it comes down to creating architectural drawings and sections and so on, like accurate sections and so on, um, that's, that's where Blender becomes a little bit more problematic. So for something that is conceptual, um, I believe this program is definitely good enough, uh, more than good enough. But uh, for technical projects, uh, you would need to come back to, you know, an architectural programs such as Rhino, Revit, Archicad, or, or something similar. Um, the main thing about Blender, or what would what, trying to figure out what's going on here. Okay, the main thing about Blender is, how do, okay, uh, when you're sketching, right? If, let's go through tiers of sketching, right? From the shittiest one to the best one, right? So the shittiest way to sketch out an idea is by using Grasshopper, by far. I mean, if you, if you have an idea and you just then start connecting nodes, I, an idea for a form, and you start connecting nodes in Grasshopper, that quickly becomes a mathematical or, or whatever uh, problem solving ex exercise rather than a, a sketching exercise, like a thinking through doing exercise. So Grasshopper or, or, or Dynamo or Revit are horrible for, for sketching out ideas. They are pretty, instead they are really, really good at defining what kind of methodology you're going to be using to achieve a certain form. Then for Rhino, um, sketching uh, while working in Rhino, you need to be really, really good at it to be able to sketch, right? Or, or, or else you'll be stuck with, you know, lofts not working properly, uh, pro properly. Uh, network surface is not working properly, nothing aligning and so on. So Rhino is also pretty, pretty weak at, uh, at that. SketchUp on the other hand, like this uh, extremely oversimplified, I, I treat SketchUp as something, like as a program that is extremely oversimplifying Rhino and Rhino's functionality. So SketchUp uh, for sketching is actually not that bad. The problem with it is that it has a, a lot of um, geometry-based limitations of what you can and cannot do. And thus, I never use it, honestly, unless I get a, a SketchUp model from a client. But other than that, no. Um, and then you have um, pen and paper or pencil and paper, which is the best. For, for, for sketching, that's exactly why we had a workshop with you, uh, where you needed to just sketch. And in between, somewhere in between uh, pen and paper and uh, I guess uh, Rhino, you have Blender, which you can, 
sketching in Blender is as if you are sculpting in, 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 in 3D, and it's actually what it's called, it's sculpting in 3D. Um, so if I just click somewhere else other than the menu box, uh, it's, it's going to be hidden. And this is like the default preset of, of what we have in the scene, right? So clicking the scroll wheel and just dragging it will rotate the camera, uh, scroll in, scroll out, right? zoom in, zoom out. And then I believe it's the shift key, yes. If you hold down the shift key, you can, and, and use the scroll wheel, uh, not use the scroll wheel, but click and drag the scroll wheel, you can pan the view, right? Simple as that. So now Blender always comes in with this default cube that uh, we always just delete, select delete. That's, that's the first thing that you need to do in, in, in Blender every time when you open up a new file. You just select the default cube and you delete it. Um, in this case, there's a light here and there's a camera here, right? So there are two more things in the scene a light and the camera. As I highlight them, let's see if I click on the, on the light, you can see on the right hand side uh, in the menu, this guy uh, is highlighted, meaning that this is the selected one. So what this tells me is that all of my objects in the scene will be located on the right hand side top view, uh, not top view, but top table where I have my camera, my light, and I had a box here, but we deleted it. So I'm going to do the same thing with the light, delete that one, and camera, delete that one. Now our scene is completely empty. Okay, so that's the first thing. The top uh, right view is where our, all of our objects are. So how do you create a new object, for instance? And let's create a, uh, we'll be creating a sphere. Whatever. Um, this is where you take out your notebooks and pens because Blender works a lot with shortcuts. On Mac, uh, really? Uh, try Backspace. Or yeah, or just delete, uh, select it. Um, let, let's see, you can also delete stuff if you just right click it on the right hand side uh, in, in that menu. Right hand side, delete. Or yeah, uh, also a shortcut for deletion is X. You, you, you can also, like the, the, the shortcut for deleting is selecting something, typing, uh, not just typing in, but just pressing X and then clicking on delete. So again, everything is shortcut based in Blender. Um, right. So to create a new type of geometry in Blender, you use a command, not a command, a, a shortcut that is shift A. Hello, shift A, control A. Oops. Ah, there we go, shift A. And when you do that, this menu will pop up where you, with the mouse, you'll be able to select what kind of uh, geometry you want, to, uh, you want to create. So remember the shortcut well, because shift A is your friend when, when working with, uh, with Blender. And in this case, we will just be creating a mesh and I will just choose UV sphere. I'll put it there. So by default, the sphere, as, as you can see, the, 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 the sphere is two by two meters or two by two units. Doesn't matter if it's meters or not. It's, it always imports like that. And there are a few things that you can change about the sphere, but for now we'll just leave it be. Um, later on I'll revisit the, the, the modifiers and things that you can change 
Um, but for now, let's just have it as it is, right? Everyone has a sphere? Yes, perfect. Okay, um, so now different ways of shading the sphere. If you click Z, without move, don't move the mouse, just click Z. You can see here that there are uh, four ways on how to, you know, what, what, what kind of shader you want, to, you want to use. There's the solid shader, which we're currently using. There's the wireframe, rendered, and material preview. So I'll just choose wireframe. And now you can see, you know, every polygon of the sphere. Some, sometimes useful. So the more you use this, the faster you're gonna get, you know, at changing um, the, 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 the shading types. But most of the time I kind of switch between wireframe and solid shaders. Cool, cool. Okay, so that's, that's our sphere. Now on the right hand side below, you see these tabs, where is uh, the, the, the settings, the scene settings, uh, output properties, and, and, and so on, like a, a bunch of these tabs. Honestly, um, I would suggest for now, just focusing on like the, the modifier tab, which is this kind of, uh, how is that called? wrench? I think the wrench icon where you can add modifiers. So modifiers are basically, for instance, solidify or, uh, yeah, let's do subdivision surface modifier, right? I'll, I'll, I'll go to the wrench modifier properties tab, right? Wrench icon, add modifier, subdivision surface. I'll give you guys a, a second to find it. So the subdivision surface uh, modifier, if I click on it, it will create this um, box, whatever, this menu here under modifiers, it will create this menu. And notice how it says Catmull Clark. Seems familiar, doesn't it? Right? That's the same <clears throat> subdivision node, let's say, uh, which we used in, in Grasshopper. And here I can just, um, right now that modifier is applied. And here if I increase the viewport uh, subdivisions to, let's say, two, you can see that the amount of polygons that I have also increases, right? So in, the, in doing so, I can increase or decrease resolution. And once I've done uh, working with it, I can either hit apply or just leave it as it is, right? If I hit apply, then my uh, geometry is going to be overridden with the one that had the modifier applied, right? So right now I'm only left with the sphere that has an additional subdivision level of Catmull Clark. So now I have, basically, I have more polygons. That's all it is. Okay, so that's that. Um, moving on, let me try to, uh -huh. So if I select my sphere now, and here, uh, so well, I'm sorry, I'm jumping around too much. <clears throat> so here we have more, of course, tabs than just the one, right? We have scene properties tab, for instance, where, where you can change the different cam, uh, like set up different cameras and so on, and uh, set up a different background for the scene, but we don't really need to, to work with that. All we care about is geometry at this point. So that's why I'm going to be skipping quite a few, quite a few tabs here. Um, and let me just quickly go through these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fine. Uh, that's output, that's for rendering, that's whatever, that's the scene, that's the world, 
what the heck is oh world properties that's fine um mm -hmm. okay nothing there i'm just going through it to just double check if i'm not uh forgetting anything about uh, like to, to 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 show you or anything all of that seems to be okay okay so basically going through these tabs i just see that there's nothing additional that i i want to show you um right next to our menu on the right hand side we have this um these four icons here right so the 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 first one is zoom in uh in the view right so so it's basically like you're just zooming into the object right this this magnifier glass uh, it's like zoom selected in rhino then you have move uh, in the view so that's like same thing as holding down uh, the shift key and uh, uh, clicking and dragging the scroll wheel then you have uh, toggle camera view so if you had a camera it would jump to a view which was already set up that's similar to named views in uh, uh, in rhino and then you have uh, switching between orthographic and perspective view right with this guy easy okay and now for the hidden stuff that there is a small arrow sticking out right next to the gumball here uh, which shows you xyz directions there's a small arrow that is uh, sticking out and, and kind of pointing towards the left hand side if you click and drag it out you can see here that you have item transforms transform information as well as item uh, dimensions so now you can see that it's all in meters you have tool uh, which i don't i don't know what what that one does <laughs> don't don't worry about it i guess and the th uh, last one is view right so you have three more tabs item tool and view item wise you can change the location you can change the rotation you can change the scale right and view wise you can change the the, the camera uh, focal length in this case which i find very very useful so focal length of the camera from rhino core uh, the rendering course we know that the sh more sh uh, shallow the lens is so the lower this number is the wider the angle of the camera is going to be right so i can choose to have like 15 and you can see how you know the, the distorted the grid is or i can choose something like 90 and then it, it becomes a little bit more orthographic right so it, it, in here you can change uh, the focal length of the camera other than that so sometimes clipping uh, is an issue where you zoom in too much to an object and it uh, starts to kind of clip off the, the geometry. So this is where you also change that, right? Clipping. Uh, can I show you here? Well, kind of something like this. Notice how this edge appears here. That's, that's clipping. If I were to change this to 0 0.01, I assume, yeah. Now it's now I can zoom in much closer to to my shape, and it doesn't clip it. Um, so so that's that's also quite useful. Cool. Any questions so far? I I, I know these are like really basic settings but it's going to increase in, in complexity quite quite quick later so, no questions wait okay waiting well if you're in a if you're inside of the sphere then it doesn't matter what kind of like if you zoomed in not close to the edge of the sphere but actually zoomed in into the sphere 
then it doesn't matter what kind of clipping setting you have. It, it's, you're just inside of the sphere. So it only works when you're barely, like, really, really close uh, to, to the face. It's actually not, you know, if it doesn't work right now, that's fine. Um, it's less of a problem Um, uh, never mind the clipping can't zoom in that far at all. Oh, well. no, that, that, that's fine. It's, it's not that big of a problem if, if, if it's clipping. Yeah. I mean, right now by default, it said that you need to have like camera 10 centimeters away from a ge uh, geometry for it to start clipping. And I don't think you will ever zoom in that close to, to geometry. Uh, Kaiser, I, I moved that target thing that is zero 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 for you. How do I move it back? Oh, this guy right here, three D cursor uh, thing, or or which one are you talking about? Yeah, um, that that's actually fine. That that <laughs> it's okay. Um, you you can move it by uh, choosing the the, the cursor and kind of dragging it around. But it's it's just for 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 camera rotation, so you you can just kind of position it somewhere closer to. Oh, I'm right now on the surface. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let 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 me show you what uh, how to fix that then. Um. When you have your sphere selected, go to object. which is in the top, uh, kind of top left corner, not really, but where you have object mode, view, select, add object, go to object, set origin, origin to center of mass volume. And now the, what the, that's so strange. Why is it working like that? Hmm. Oh, that's because surface project was on. No, it's not. Hmm. Wait, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm quiet. I'm just trying to figure, figure out why the heck does, uh, why the heck is 3D cursor not cooperating that well. Well, okay, let's do it the ghetto way. Basically when you, uh, on the left hand side, when you select the cursor, right? The 3D cursor, that's the second one uh, on the list. When you select it, on the right hand side, you, you have its kind of menu, right? If you turn off surface project, if you turn that off, then you can kind of switch to the Z view and position it correctly in the Z view, like that. Switch to Y view, position it correctly in the Y view. It's not gonna be perfect, but that's good enough. Nine nine zero. Oh yeah. Where you have the um, in the view tab. That's an alternative. In the view tab, you can change this to zero zero zero. It's just that accuracy is not that you know for for a three D cursor accuracy is absolutely not not important. Um, for now, later, later it will be. Okay. Ah, oh, crap. I did it myself. Okay. Had too much fun, uh, playing around with this. Didn't notice that we were running out of time. Um, continuing on. So we have our, you know, sphere and you ha we have a few settings here and there. 
um, that that we've changed. The main thing about uh, the main thing about this uh, uh, the, 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 about Blender is that it has different working modes, right? So right now we're in object mode, which you can see on the left hand side, le left top side of the screen. And here I can change from object mode to edit mode, to sculpt mode, vertex, weight paint, and texture paint mode. There are also more than just that. Uh, because here you have modeling mode. Uh, well, it's not, is that modeling mode? It's, it's like presets for how, you're go, uh, how you can be working with Blender. So you can model with it, you can sculpt with it, you can use UV editor with it. So that's for texture creation. You can actually paint textures on top of your model. Um, shading wise, it's, uh, you, you can create, just like with Grasshopper, here you can create nodes for different textures and kind of connect them into a network for a fancy material, for a fancy shader. Animation uh, creation, rendering, and then you have uh, composing and even scripting, which is, you know, why not? Why not? But in this case, we are just going to, uh, to be using object mode, edit mode, and sculpt mode from, from here. And in other words, it would be, in other words, it would be layout, modeling, and sculpting views, these three. So I've showed you uh, object mode, where it, basically in object mode, you move stuff around, you scale stuff, but you can't really, do anything with the stuff. If I select my sphere and I hit the tab button, it will immediately uh, jump me or jump me, transfer me into edit mode, as you can see here. It, it says so here, edit mode, where I can mess around with, with you know, with the vertices. I can move the vertices around. I can uh, delete, uh, chamfer, bevel, whatnot. Like I can slice, uh, I, can, I, I can make cuts, you know, in, in, in my model and so on. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, with, uh, within the, 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 oh my God, how is it called? Uh, ed edit mode, within edit mode. And the nicest thing about it is that I can build polygons here as well. So for reto uh, manual retopology of meshes, this uh, edit mode is, is really good. Like compared to creating a mesh in Rhino, uh, creating a mesh here is really, really good. Like much, much easier. Um, I, we will be coming back to the edit mode in a bit. But for now, um, let's 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 leave it. So I'll I'll jump immediately to the sculpt mode, which is the third one. Sculpt mode, and this is where. Up until now, I was showing everything with a, uh, with a mouse, and now I'm just going to change the mouse with my graphics tablet. But you can r really like. You can use a mouse for this, it's fine. It's just, um, I honestly, I never use, have used Blender with a mouse. That's why I'm a little bit clumsy. <laughs> right now when I'm, I'm giving a tutorial, I only use Blender with a graphics tablet. So here in, in, in sculpting mode, let me just check. Converting mesh recording. Uh, it's going to be a little bit laggy for me. Uh, wait, let me open up the chat. Yeah, yeah, if you have a tablet, go ahead and use it.
So I have set up the tablet, like my tablet, you can see, by the way, can you see the, when I'm clicking the, uh, the buttons of the tablet, can you see them pop up in the top uh, of my screen? Or, or not? Oops. It's a long one. Minimize that. Okay. That's good. Uh, how did you get to Skullgun? Can you show? Ah, I found it. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead. So I have set up my tablet so that uh, the four buttons that I have uh, that, that I'm mostly using in sculpting is Shift, Control, F, and uh, Undo. Well, Undo is, you know, kind of logical. You know, you, you want an Undo button. F, if I click the F button, I can increase or decrease the brush size with F, right? So that increases or decreases the brush size. Uh, control, I don't remember what I use. Oh yeah, control, and I also have like this small button on my pen, uh, which corresponds to the me clicking a scroll wheel. So control and scroll wheel is zoom in, zoom out. And then shift on scroll wheel is pan. So yeah, that's that. So now on to, on to sculpting. Whew. Okay, on the, on the left hand side, you have um, the, these brushes, so to say, like the, the different, different brushes. And let me expand this menu a bit. Yeah. So that it's easier for you, for, for, for you to see what, what I'm talking about. So on the left hand side, you have different brushes. You have draw, draw sharp, blah, blah, blah. Right? I will be going through these. Um, before we begin though, let me show you one thing. Right now we have a locked resolution on off of our sphere, right? So if I use a draw brush and I can I, I kind of draw on it. You can see that I'm, I'm going to be quite limited by the resolution, you know, of, of how many polygons I have. Let me undo that. By how many polygons I have, which is for sketching purposes, it's kind of shitty. You know, I, I want to have um, as many polygons as I need, basically. So this is where um, the dynamic topology comes in very handy. It's located on the top, kind of top left side. How do I? <laughs> oh, that's not left, that is right, yes. Um, it's located on the top the right side, uh, where, where it says Dime Topo. I can tick mark, tick mark it, and it's gonna give me a warning, vertex data detected, we don't care. Uh, I'll just hit OK. And now dynamic topology is uh, turned on. Before I do anything with it, well, I can kind of show you. See how now um, the resolution kind of increases as I'm, as I'm creating these uh, brush strokes here? So that's what the dynamic topology does. It increases the resolution where it's needed. But by default, it says, like if I expand dynamic topology uh, tab, it says detail size is 12 pixels, um, meaning that every 12 pixels, a new voxel is going to be created. So it matters if I'm, let's say, if I'm zoomed in and I do this, right? And, I'm, and then if I'm zoom out and I do the same thing here, See how, um, see how the, uh, the, the polygons are different in sizes, which is not ideal for me. I, I want the polygons to be kind of the same size no, uh, and sh they should be locked to how big my brush is rather to how closely I'm zoomed into the screen. Another thing is 
you know, when working with uh, screen-based uh, detail size, if I now accidentally brush over this small guy, the resolution of it gets destroyed, right? So instead of choosing uh, relative detail in, in dynamic topology detailing, relative detail, I will choose brush detail. And here it says, what kind of percentage do you want? So it's going to like, let, let's just say it like this. Uh, for, for rough sketching, 25% is fine. For something where you need it to be really crisp, really clean, then you turn it down to like 12%. And if you're modeling out something like uh, a bunch of hair, then perhaps even 6% is fine. Keep in mind that if you change this to 6%, well, let, let me show you. Uh, you don't need to do this part. So if I change this to 6% and I kind of work with it, right? And then uh, let me just show you the polygons. See how many polygons are created? Like this is a really fast way of how to completely destroy your uh, performance, like computer performance. So keep that in mind. Uh, let me undo that. Sculpt mode, undo, 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 undo. There we go. So for now, I'm going to use 25%, which is going to kind of, we will still be able to see the, the, the polygons, but it's, it's fine, right? This is just for, 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 for drawing purposes. Okay, so that's dynamic topology. There are mo more things to, to look at, for instance, uh, right now, it's said to be um, refining method. It's, it's said to be subdivide collapse, uh, which means that if I were to come in here and kind of draw something out like so, and maybe have even smaller radius like so, and zoom in here, draw out like so. So, right, if, if I were to check it, you can see how you know that the resolution keeps increasing. Uh, where it's it's said to be subdivide collapse, refining method subdivide collapse. If I were to zoom out and I were to brush over it, just like that, it's going to destroy the the, the resolution that I have. Right, that's the collapse part. If I don't want to destroy the resolution, I can choose instead of subdivide collapse. I can just choose subdivide edges rather than subdivide collapse. If I choose that and I zoom out and I brush over it, you can see that the resolution is not affected. But honestly, like when, when you're working with it like so, it's going to be like the amount of polygons is going to be increasing extremely fast. And eventually you won't be able to, uh, to, to control it anymore. Let me quickly undo the nipple and change it back to subdivide collapse. Okay. Um, where, where do we have the chat? I don't see the chat, so I have no idea if it's working for you or not. Where did you find the brush setting? Click the small arrow on the... Ah, okay. <laughs> so you guys are helping each other out. That's really nice. Um, so dynamic topology is definitely your friend. And everything that I'm going to be showing you now is assume that you will be using that on your building and on, your, on the landscape um, as well, right? And you will be using this to merge the building and the landscape together. Um, now on to the brushes. And let me go through like five brushes and then we will have a break and then continue on um, looking at the remaining ones. So honestly, I will start off by, by yeah, just the draw brush, right? So we already have played around with this a little bit, but notice when I draw with it, 
there's some uh, th there's this kind of symmetry involved, right? And that's uh, here, right next to dy dynamic topology, you have X, Y, and Z symmetry setup, right? If I turn, uh, and, and X is turned on, meaning that everything that we draw will, will have uh, symmetry along the X axis. Sure, why not, right? Um, in, in, in our case, if your uh, building is not symmetrical, then you should turn off X symmetry and then kind of, you know, you just work on one side and then you work on the other one and, and so on. Even for like w when you're drawing people or, or characters, first you always start off with symmetry, of course, because it's faster. But once you're done, uh, you know, setting up the main shape, you turn off symmetry because no one is perfectly symmetrical in, in, in the world, right? So that's that. Um, that's uh, symmetry. Then we have, uh, okay, so, so now we can start talking about brushes. Draw a brush. Uh, in the top, you have radius, strength, plus or minus signs, uh, and then uh, some expandable uh, menus for brush, texture, stroke, and blah, blah, blah. So radius-wise, uh, in this case, um, you can use F and kind of make it bigger or smaller, or you can just use the slider instead, right? Up to you. There's also, uh, okay, I can't show you what kind of buttons I'm pressing, and this is a Swedish keyboard, so <laughs> I have no idea how those buttons are called. Doesn't matter, uh, it's either F, <laughs> Or, or using the slider in the top for, for the radius. And that should be kind of self-explanatory. You, know, you all used Photoshop, right? So, so it's kind of clear um, what, what radius of a brush does. Then you have uh, strength. So let's say, let's look at the butt of this guy. Uh, let's say I have strength of 0 0.1 or wh whatever, 0 0.1. And I do a brush brush stroke, or I do a lot of brush strokes over and over and over again, right? It barely bulges. But if I do strength of let's say two, it does that, right? So you can use the strength modifier to to your advantage while uh, creating form for sure. Don't use, uh, like you can see here, if I use strength of two, it becomes a little bit too extreme and you start losing a little bit of control. The highest I would go with these kind of brushes is strength of one, in, 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 except one brush, which I'll show you later. Let me turn on the... the, the, the. The, the, the <laughs> mirroring, how is it called? Symmetry. Let me turn on the symmetry again. Okay, so we have that going on. Uh, then you have here, you have brush uh, where you can change different, different settings of the brush. I don't want to go into detail about this. This is, an, oh, this is not important, but what is important is the thing that I skipped. This plus and minus sign, right? Right next to the strength, you have plus and minus. If plus is set, it's going to keep adding geometry, right? If minus is set, then it's going to be removing geometry. so you can carve into it. Let me check the chat. One new message, not one. No, one. Eh. My resolution on the brush is much worse than yours, but have 25 on resolution. Uh, it might be, hmm, that is strange. Um, change it 
change it to 12. Uh, if, if, if the resolution is worse, then just decrease it. And also just make sure that uh, the tick mark is set for dynamic, dynamic topology. So you have it tick marked. If you don't have it tick marked, it won't work. Um, but if, if you need more resolution, just add, uh, just decrease the percentage. Can you show uh, how you carved it again? Uh, I just used, in, instead of this plus sign for, for my brush, I just use the negative sign. And then I can, I, I can carve into it like so. Okay, next. Any short command for that? I don't know. Uh, pro definitely there is, I just don't know it. Um, you need to, uh, wait, what if we have a, no, it doesn't tell us. What about here? No, it doesn't tell us here. I don't know um, the, the, the shortcut for it. I just click, click it. Um, any way to expand the menu with radius? Uh, can't show all of it while viewing. So, Frey, can you ask the question again in different words? Uh, do you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think most of us has the has Zoom and and um, uh -huh. uh, blah, blah, Blender up at the same time, like in uh -huh. parallel with Windows. And then the whole menu up top, where like there seems to be a whole lot of important <laughs> settings, is you have to like scroll it like in a, a horizontal scroll way. And is there any way to like make it so it's maybe two layers or something? Because uh, I had to look very for a long time before I found dynamic topology and such. Ah, uh, got it. Uh, let me see. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, maybe. Would this be better? <laughs> like now me showing you, uh, showing you stuff like, like, like so, and as just ignoring, you know, this, this kind of um, second viewport in the top. Oh no, that's horrible. I was just thinking about uh, like my own menu because because it's supposed you have it in full screen and then everything is showing. Or uh -huh. is it only me that has that problem? I don't know. Um, <laughs> what what about others? It may, maybe we won't be in that menu like much more. Uh, but okay. Um, we I'll manage. <laughs> in, in that menu, we will be just changing just a few more things. Actually, let, let's do it this way. I will go through that menu now, you know, everything that I want to show in that menu, like in that uh, top menu, and then we will forget that it exists, right? Perfect. Uh, maybe, maybe that's going to help out a little bit uh, to follow. So, okay, let, let, let me go through the stuff in this menu. We have the brush where you can have either radius units in, uh, as per view, meaning it's going to be in pixels, or you can have it uh, per, per scene, which is going to be in uh, meters, right? But in this case, yeah, I, I prefer to use per view. Then you have normal radius, auto smooth. So auto smooth, never have it on. Uh, auto smooth is shit. Uh, well, okay, okay, that's very, rough to say no auto smooth is definitely not shit only the, the only problem that i have with it is that it hides the crimes that you make right uh, it, it kind of blends the the polygons together and you don't see the polygons anymore so there's no real way of how to determine the resolution which is not ideal for sure so so that's that Besides that, in the brush drop-down box, there is one thing that is front faces only. The last part of the brush drop-down box is front faces only. And um, how can I show this? No. Well, 
let's say it like that. If you have something that is very thin, let's say a piece of cloth, and you want to add stuff only to the top part, you know, only to the front side of that piece of cloth, then you need to choose front faces only. If this is turned off and you're kind of using the brush to thicken it up, it's going to thicken it up on both sides, right? So the brush is going to influence the backside as well. And it's going to make weird stuff uh, happen. So if you're working with something that is extremely thin, on an ex extremely thin surface, you need to turn on uh, that, that, that front faces only setting in, in, in here. I'll, I'll probably come back to this uh, tomorrow or, 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 or maybe later today. Then we have texture. Uh, we ignore that tab for now. We don't care about that tab. Then we have stroke. So stroke wise, the only thing that I actually change is stabilize stroke. So here in the stroke tab, you have stabilize stroke. If you turn it on, this is going to be especially useful for the mouse users. So with stroke, stabilize stroke turned on, if I were to now draw, See how there is the stabilization for, for the mouse? I, I don't know how to explain it. It's basically as if you're dragging, you're dragging the, 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 the brush with this uh, red line, right? It's, it's st stabilizing line. Um, for, 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 people who are using mice for this, this is going to be really, really helpful to, to kind of stabilize, you know, your, your, your movements. Okay, so we have that. Stroke, uh, stabilize stroke. I usually, like since I'm using a, a, a tablet, I only use it for a few of these um, brushes. Uh, for making nice cuts, but other than that, it, this is a very, very useful, useful little tool. Okay, and then we have fall off uh, and cursor. Okay, so cursor, we don't care. Fall off, you can change uh, the fall off to be a little bit different, but uh, to start things off, I would uh, suggest that you just have it as default, right? It's better to kind of completely understand what's going on with basic um, settings and then go deeper into more advanced settings rather than uh, trying to kind of master all of the settings at the same time. So let's jump to the, to the right hand side view where we have the draw brush. Does everyone see the same thing as I see on the right-hand side view? Mm -hmm. Okay. So most of the settings that are used here in the top are also on the, on the right-hand side, right? Radius, uh, strength, uh, direction, and so on. It's just for me with work, working with the with the pen. It's it's faster for me to move to the top rather than for me to move to the to the right because I'm left-handed, right? So so for me, I need to stretch to, to to move to the to the right. But for you, it might be you know more convenient here uh, to 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 change things here. Um, here you have a few more no you don't have a few more settings all, all, all of the settings that i've shown are also located here oh crap i should have just yeah i should have just showed you <laughs> showed you it on, on the right hand side i'm just so uh, used to using the, the the top menu well whoops sorry um 
what else is there uh, to, to, to show about this? Nothing here. Nothing here. I'm just trying to remember. Okay, uh, so before our lunch break, uh, not the lunch break, no, too early for that. Before our break, smoke break, we will have, uh, I, I will show you one last thing, and it's material preview. So when sculpting, you usually want to use a material that exemplifies the curvature, right? That shows, uh, shows the curvature as well as it, you know, as it can. Um, on the right hand side, in the top, right above the XYZ uh, gizmo, how is that called? Doesn't matter. Right above this XYZ thingy, you have different settings for for the shading, right? Wireframe view, you have uh, the, 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 the shaded view, material view, or, or solid view, material view, and rendered view. Uh, we always stay with uh, the second one, the, the, the material, not material, sorry, the, the shaded view or <laughs> solid view. I keep going between like five different programs and how things are called in five different programs. So solid view, right? This guy right here, the, the full on white circle. <clears throat> and let's expand that menu downwards where you can see, uh, if, if you click the small arrow on the right hand side of that uh, list of, of material presets, you can see this whole menu pop up. And this is where you can change the, uh, like wh wh where you can change the materials. Um, well, the preview material, I guess. So you have three types of materials. You have studio, matcap, and flat. Those are types. Well, those are types of lighting, actually, not types of material. But in this case, um, in, in our case for sculpting, notice how studio material is much, uh, studio lighting is much more flat rather than matcap. Right, if we change between studio and matcap, matcap is much more pronounced, right? Matcap materials are used for, or matcap lighting is used for uh, sculpting, right? Because it exemplifies the the the, the um, curvature of the form. If I click on the sphere right under matcap, it shows me the preview of the material. If I click on that, I can choose what kind of material I want to use for for um, you know to to display. My suggestion would be either um, the red one here. For some reason, this one really helps me, like wh when I'm sculpting, really helps me see all of the nooks and crannies better. Or um, just simple skin tone, you know, this kind of skin tone material, bronzy. Please don't sculpt with something like this, you know, or, or, or even worse, oh, I like it shiny. You know, don't don't sculpt with something like this. You will have no idea what kind of geometry you're creating. But know that you know you 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 do have a lot of uh, options here to to choose from. What the heck is going on with these guys? Doesn't matter. Even tune material is here. Okay, so that's you know. Now you'll have. Uh, you'll have something to do while we have the break, right? <laughs> Just going through different, ooh, it's shiny. <laughs> um, then you have um, color settings for, a color can be by material, by object, by vertex, by texture, random, single. I will not be going through these. Uh, just know that if uh, something is screwing up here, uh, like if, if, if if you choose matcap and you choose, you know, the, the nice material, let's say the red one, and it shows up black or something like that, then change the color space from material to object. And that should fix it. I won't go too deep into this. 
then you have settings for background and uh, back face culling and you know all of the depth of field what the heck no it doesn't change anything okay i thought it's going to start blurring stuff in the back maybe it will but let me is that no that doesn't blur anything okay never mind don't don't mess with the depth of field okay oh yeah and uh the the the, the Oh, actually, I'll, I'll explain this after after our quick break. Before we have it, we have three minutes left. Do you have any any questions, or uh, do you want me to show anything one one more, uh, one more time? Or is everything kind of you you managed to follow so far? The resolution. Um, quick commands for plus and minus and strength. Uh, the, I don't know. Uh, the you can right click um, with your with your mouse. You can right click and then change the strength here really quickly. But usually, like it's just the radius that I change a lot. I don't change strength for plus and or minus. Uh, that that much so i didn't bother learning shortcuts for it i just needed to do, learn the shortcut for the radius um and then for uh, resolution it's this guy right here dynamic topo or if actually let me show you on the right hand side right here on the right hand side if you scroll down and you will see the uh, dyn topo the dynamic topology if you expand it then here you can first of all make sure that it's tick marked you need it to be ticked if it's not ticked it's not gonna work so make sure that it's ticked then you choose brush detail instead of relative detail you choose brush detail and uh, then you just choose percentage while you're sketching 25 percent is more than enough as you can see here but once you are going to get into it and kind of polish it out, then you kind of, you know, start decreasing that percentage until you, you see like six, or like six percent or something like that. Oh, there we go. Uh, hold control to get minus. Nice. I didn't know that. Does it work? Let me try. Yeah, okay. So if you hold down the control key, then it becomes a negative. Huh. The more you know. Okay. Um, hopefully that, that works for everyone. Less than a minute left. So f 15 minutes and uh, we will continue in, in 15 minutes. Cool. Go and bye. Record. Okay, so now we can we can continue. Um, up until now, I only showed you one one brush, right? And basically, we were working on a sphere, so it's not nothing too too fancy, just some sort of a weird shape that that we got. So let let's see how uh, let's see what we can do with. Uh, other brushes for now by the way uh, on, on the bottom right corner of your screens you will see sphere which means it's it's you know it's the name of the geometry that we're currently sculpting vertices that's how many points that that geometry has and uh, tri tries uh, which is you know how many polygons that 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 form has Always keep uh, keep an eye eye out for um, these these numbers 
if these numbers get too too high, uh, basically as you're sculpting, you're con constantly kind of increasing the, 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 the amount of polygons that you have and in turn the amount of vertices that you have. Um, keep an eye out for these. If these increase too, too much, then you will need to do what's called a decimate mesh. And I will show that in a bit, but basically you'll need to reduce the mesh uh, resolution a little bit. For now, uh, 34,000 is absolutely fine, uh, for, at least for my computer to handle. Usually I start decreasing the resolution of the mesh, like using decimate mesh, uh, when I reach around uh, 200, 300,000 uh, vertices. Um, if I need it to be a very high uh, detail mesh, I would let it go as high as a million vertices or, or even even more. But uh, you know, the, the, the more points you have, the, the, the slower, the less responsive the brush is going to be. That, that's, that's the basics of it. Okay, um, so now going through, let me just double check. Yes, I'm recording, that's good. Uh, now going through uh, other, other brushes. Um, the blue ones are basically uh, adding, all of the blue brushes are either adding or removing geometry, right? Uh, so, so you can just draw, you know, 3D lines, you can draw sharp 3D lines. Well, that's a negative. Let's do a positive somewhere, somewhere here. Ah, I do. Zoom in. What the? Is this one not? I never used this one before. Let's let's, let's try. Oh, okay. Uh, so some of them don't react to. That's fine. Some of them don't react to dynamic topology. I believe it's uh, this one, but. Mostly it's the smooth brush that doesn't react to dynamic, dynamic topology, which is fine. Um, honestly, I never use draw sharp. Um, I just change the, the, the uh, fall off of the draw and it solves it for me. Uh, so let, let's just skip the draw sharp for now. Then you have clay and clay strips. In, in between these two, I would definitely suggest using clay strips rather than clay, uh, simply because clay strips uh, is, is much more intuitive in the way it works. So we can just uh, disregard the clay brush and just use clay strips. So in this case, I'm just showing you draw and clay strips. So the way clay strips works is you can see it kind of adds like a, it, it's, it's like a flat brush, right? So it keeps adding clay strips. <laughs> To, 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 your, to your model. Right. Quite useful for blocking out uh, the geometry, for sure. And I use this a lot, right? For just getting the, the overall feel of the geometry. I use clay strips much more than I just use a regular draw brush. Because, simply because they, they, are, uh, they are flat. Your clay strips don't draw anything? Instead of clay, use clay strips. And then the, the double check if you have dynamic to topology on. Increase the strength then. I have no idea why it wouldn't draw. Huh. That's, that's, that is very weird. Yeah, uh, try out layer. If, if that persists, we will come back to this and see how we can, how we can fix it. But it should work. And always like, again, I always keep Keep an eye out for how many vertices I have. 
right now I have 59,000. If I were to kind of draw more clay strips here, let's say I, I draw something like this, you know, and I add, add, add a little bit more here. You can see that now I'm at 69,000, right? And if I draw even more, 73,000. So it keeps increasing, right? Because I'm, I'm increasing the resolution more and more. Um, let me find where, where to put the chat. Yeah, okay. So we have that going on. That's, that's clay strips. Adding, removing geometry with clay strips for me is much more convenient than just with the draw brush. Then you have layer, inflate, blob, and, and so on. All of these are very nuanced. And I will come back to, uh, to these four in a bit. For now, I want to show you um, other types of, of, of way to, on how to transform, the, <clears throat> sorry, on how to transform the form uh, within Blender. So the, the red ones are not necessarily adding geometry. Uh, they will add, some of them will add resolution, but they will not uh, increase or decrease the, the volume that much. Let me explain. For instance, smooth, right? If I choose smooth and I go over my, my, my strips here that I've made, I can just kind of smooth them out and po polish them out. Like so. So remember the auto smooth function that I said you shouldn't use? By default, auto smooth will do this as you're creating uh, geometry. <clears throat> and I think that is a very bad way of, of working. It's better to kind of lay it out as you know clay strips or, or whatnot, and then smooth it out as you go. Right. Once you have the, the, the rough form done. A shortcut for using smooth is the shift key. Right. So if you just hold down the shift key, it will automatically uh, use smooth for you. OK, so that's smooth. Don't don't use smooth too much. Um, especially at the beginning of, 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 of the work, because it will kind of me me mess it up for you, um, right? You won't be able to see the polygons that well. After smooth, you have flatten. Oh, by the way, and all of the settings are kind of the same, right? Um, and, and smooth doesn't create new vertices as well. That's, that's also an important thing. Right. Flatten, though, it does create resolution according to you know, the, the dynamic topology settings that you have. And the way Flatten works is if I go into this guy and I'll just increase my brush a little bit bigger. Oh, yeah, that's good. Actually, let me increase the strength. I can start flattening out some parts. Of my of my geometry, right? It it takes uh, a little bit of time to get used to this uh, to this brush, but basically with flattened brush, I, I think before it was called the polished brush. Uh, you you can make some nice 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 flattened shapes. Works for everyone. Yep. Okay. So you can come in and this is, again, this is like polishing brush. So, so with this, you can start specifying what kind of, um, where will you have surfaces, right? Before, uh, we, we only worked with volume, right? 
So everything was kind of curvilinear and nothing had a sharp edge. And now with the flattened brush, this is the first time when I, I, I start introducing, you know, flatter uh, curvilinear surface. Like I'm, I'm introducing surfaces to this, not just uh, blobs, right? I'll jump back in here with smooth to kind of get rid of that. And I have something like this. So we're slowly starting to come into, what you might call it, hard surface modeling, right? With, with, with these brushes, rather than, than soft surface modeling. So that's move and flatten. <clears throat> then you have scrape. I, I'm skipping fill because I don't think it's, it's an important one for now, for, for beginner level. Um, so, so we have scrape. Scrape is very similar to flatten, only that it kind of uh, flattens things out by removing material, right? So I'll go into here and I'll use scrape and hopefully you can see what's going on. So. And keep in mind for all of these brushes, you can go to stroke and you can use the stabilize stroke um, tick mark to, to kind of stabilize it and make sure that it's all, you know, nice and curvilinear. If you don't want to do like a lot of uh, strokes uh, at once, you can increase the strength. Don't increase it more than, uh, to more than two though it might start making some weird, weird stuff, right? So that's scrape. Also another really powerful, powerful tool. Something like this. Huh? And that's, you know, the, 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 the four orange tools. Smooth, flatten, and scrape. Everyone with me so far, or should I repeat something or explain something a little bit more? Works for everyone, huh? Okay. Let's move on. So now we have the, 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 the scrape, the flatten, Let's see what other tools we have here. We have multiplane scrape, which uh, later, not now, because I want to show you pinch as fast as possible. <laughs> so pinch, if I select pinch <clears throat> tool, um, for, for, for pinch to work, it, it basically will align the vertices in, at, uh, along um, some sort of a direction that, that you, well, you can see it in the, yeah, in here, you, you can see what, what pinch does. It creates seams, right? It, it cleans up the seams. So pinch is a healing brush. It's, it's, it's definitely your friend, right? And, and something that you will be using through and through. Let me show you how it works. For pinch, even when using a graphics tablet, I always use the stabilize stroke. Uh, so it's under stroke, stabilize stroke. I always use that for pinch, just because I want to have as clean of an edge as I possibly can. And then you need to be mindful over how big your brush is when you're using pinch. If the brush is, brush is too big, let me show you. If the brush is too big, and you go with pinch, see how it kind of screws up everything? So be mindful of that. Uh, you want the, the pinch brush to be kind of the same size as the edge that you're going to be cleaning up. Well, not kind of, it basically shouldn't, in, in this case, the brush that I have doesn't extend to the second edge that I'm going to be cleaning up, right? So it only will influence the, 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 the edge that I'm showing right now. So now I'll, I'll have the pinch, I'll increase its strength to one. 
or as a famous YouTuber said, you can increase it to two and then call it super pinch. But for now, I'll just use one. And I'll just go along the seam and kind of pinch it like so. Then I'll decrease the radius even more, let's see, by half and go through it again. Like so. So pinch, as you can see, is your absolute friend, right? It makes your geometry, it, it cleans up your geometry like no other uh, tool can, uh, can do. And just going in here, kind of pinching everything, making sure that everything is clean, making the pinch a little bit smaller. Not that small though. And just going to town. You can also have a slightly bigger brush, but in dynamic topology, change the detail percentage to 12% so that it, it has enough resolution to work, to work with and kind of go around here and smooth everything out. And maybe I want to pinch this area right here as well to kind of make a nice seam here like that. Super pinch. Okay. So now looking at it, you can see, you know, how one, one part of, of, of this whole thing got cleaned up pretty, pretty drastically compared to everything else that we have. I'll just give you a little bit of, of, of time to get accustomed to this tool. So when you're using pinch, you're basically defining surfaces, right? Oh, and I messed up here. The nice thing about, uh, about working in Blender is that, let's say I, I, I don't like how this, this looks, right? I can easily go in, in into clay strips, uh, brush and kind of Oh yeah, I need to jump back to detail percentage of 25. Kind of mess around with it, right? Use move to blend it in. Like so, use the flatten brush, kind of flatten it out more. And then come back into it with the pinch, pinch brush. And kind of clean it up. So for sketching purposes, this is excellent. Now we have something like this. Um, Let's see, uh, why can't I? No, give me, give me the chat, chat, chat. Ah, there we go. So no one's seeing anything in chat. That's good. Um, well, or not good. <laughs> so now I'm at eighty-four thousand vertices. Still plenty of of of, of room to work with. And I have uh, a form like, like this. 
Now on to other, other stuff here. Grab, right? For grab tool, let me increase the size so that it's easier to see. I can deform my form by just grabbing it and pulling it to the side, right? I, I can just keep de de deforming it. So grab wise, it's, it's, it's kind of nice, but the, the, the problem with it is that, um, not, not the problem, but it's used for slight modifications, right? Where, where, where you want to kind of squeeze these two guys, let's say closer together. Then you use the grab, grab tool and you're, you're kind of squeezing them like so. Um, another one is called elastic deform which is uh, with this one, you can move it much further out. Like so. So you can use elastic deform to change the overall shape of, of, of your geometry quite drastically. And since it's elastic, it has an influence, influence uh, radius, so to say. That's elastic deform. And then you have snake hook. So snake hook, the way it works, let me see. Let's decrease the, the brush size just a tiny bit. And if I take the snake hook, see how it immediately messes up my geometry? That is because snake hook, uh, while grab and elastic deform, they don't work with dynamic topology, snake hook does, right? So it will build the, the, the topology as you're extracting stuff from, from, your, uh, from your shape. So snake hook is, is, is great for, for like ex extracting, not extracting geometries, but adding more geometries. And with snake hook, I, I can kind of show you what, one thing that you can change that, that might be useful for you. And let me find it. Radius, strength, normal auto smooth, topology rate, normal rate, magnify. Uh, where, where it says on the right hand side corner, where it says magnify, if this is changed to zero point, uh, uh, if this is changed to one, and then I use snake hook, ah, messed it up. Come on, just give me. It's almost it. it it's not going to to change. Um, to, it's it's not going to taper down, right? So by using snake hook, you can keep adding. Um, you can keep adding geometry over and over. Right? So that's snake hook. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you have like post, thumb, nudge, and rotate. All of these are um, no, don't 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 care about those. Um, and for for those of you who are using uh, the, the the alpha version, uh, you will have the cloth brush as well. Um, I think if I try to use it now. It might break my 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 blender file, but let's see let's see. I'll just make it smaller. Let's see if it works. All right. Uh, so, so the thing is that um, cloth brush apparently doesn't work with uh, with with uh, topology. 
uh, with dynamic topology. So you need to have high uh, density, not yeah, high density of a mesh in the place where you're applying the cloth brush. So I'll just go into into it with the let's say the flattened brush, and just kind of flatten it out. Yeah, yeah, just flatten it out a little bit. You know, in, in, introduce a little bit more resolution here, like that. And now let's see if uh, if cloth brush will work. This is still ex quite experimental. As you can see, it doesn't even have an icon yet. But if I try and, and use it, it will deform the form as if it was made out of cloth, which is kind of nice for modeling clothes. But for architecture, it's nonsense. You know, you, you, you don't need it. Uh, yeah, so we have that. Let me try and kind of make this a bit nicer. So we have something like that. Maybe we have something like that. If you get some uh, like a bump like this, for instance, just use the smooth brush and kind of smooth it out. That should, that should fix it. But if you, if you have a problem here, for instance, see how this is high resolution and this is low resolution. If I were to get, get in here with this, oh, the smooth brush. No, never mind. If I were to get in here with the smooth brush, see how it doesn't create new resolution for me? That means I can't really smooth this whole thing out. Then I would need to use what's called uh, either flatten, by the way, flatten would work. I could just use flatten for this, or fire radius. To kind of make, make, make this trendi transition here uh, to, to, to clean it off. Or I could use, let's say for, for this portion, I will use simplify. So that's the last, I think the last brush that I'm going to be showing before the lunch break. Simplify. What Simplify does is, uh, let me find, okay, so this is like a low resolution area, right? If I were to hit the tab button, you can see, you know, not, not a lot of polygons. Let me hit tab again to come back to the sculpting mode. If I use Simplify, eh, Simplify, if I use this brush, and just kind of brush over this. The geometry doesn't change, right? But if now I hit tab, I can see that I've added much more resolution. So simplify is as if you're using dynamic topology without actually moving. So you're rebuilding geometry with dynamic topology, but you're not moving any vertices. But what this will help me do is if I come come back in here. Oh, by the way, and uh, you you can also destroy geometry with, with simplify brush if you just kind of go through it like so. Right? You can decrease the amount of vertices. So be careful with that. If I go back in here now, when uh, after using the simplify brush, and kind of let's say I use smooth now going to smooth out perfectly because the the resolution in the topology matches up right the resolution of the topology match matches up like so i don't like that nipple there so working with uh, with sculpting in, in in blender is basically um trying to not do a lot of nipples, right? And also kind of working with weird, weird geometry until you kind of polish it out so that it looks nice. And so that it's something that you wanted to, to have in the first place. The more you practice, the better you get at it, of course. Just like with any any tool, 
um, but for sketching purposes, I believe this is like the, the best. And not a lot of architects use these. Um, I think there is one, uh, and it's not, he's not even an architect. He's uh, like a product developer who is using, uh, who, who is using uh, Blender or sculpting in Blender to sketch out uh, his, his forms and then kind of moving on with remodeling them in, uh, he's using SolidWorks, um, but doesn't matter. Rhino is just as good. So remodeling them later on in, in, in SolidWorks. But other than that, this is still a pretty new, uh, pretty new approach, right, to, to, to modeling. So I think, you know, having this skill is, is, is pretty nice. Okay. Now it's time for, for lunch. Do you have any questions before we, we break for lunch? Oh, I stopped there. Uh, where's the chat? You, we, we start again at uh, 15 past one. Um, okay, uh, do, do, do. Let, let me start from, from, the, from the beginning. Uh, okay, maximize the chat. Looks really evil, nice, yes. I, I think so too. Uh, currently at 700 tri uh, triangles, super. Um, if, if the computer is still checking with 700 um, polygons, 700,000 polygons, uh, that's a decent computer that you have. Good job. I will uh, show you how to, or actually I will show you how to decrease the, the polygons now. Uh, before we break for lunch, we still have like two, almost three minutes, so it's going to be fast. What did you do so it doesn't taper? Um, for, 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 for the snake hook on the right-hand side where it says magnify, I chose this to be one instead of 0 0.5, so it doesn't d keep decreasing by 0 0.5 uh, by every meter, I believe, uh, it, it, it doesn't decrease. Uh, so it's, it's magnify uh, on, on the right-hand side of the, of, of the screen. Um, would Rhino have problems? Oh, do we have, uh, do we get back after this or was it fixing the landscape? A uh, after this, you will still have thir 30 minutes uh, to do. Uh, to, 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 to kind of choose the landscape that you're going to be working on and make it a uh, closed uh, mesh. So, so you'll be doing this uh, before, you'll finish up the landscape before the, the lunch break. Oh, we won't have enough time for me to show you the, the decimate, but we'll do that right after the lunch break. Would Rhino have problems uh, handling this many tri tries and verts? Um, Three million is the absolute, like I wouldn't go higher than three million uh, polygons in Rhino, but something like this is absolutely like with, without any problems uh, would ha uh, handle it. With pinch, it creates like a flat edge thing that, uh, what can you do? I don't know what you mean, uh, flat edge thing. Uh, With pinch, it creates like a flat edge thing. Um, if the pinch is too small, if the pinch radius is too small, then it is going to, uh, to do this, right? So, so it will have a, a flat edge on one side and flat edge on the other side. So you need to always like, wh when you're working with pinch, you always need to choose the correct, uh, 
correct uh, radius for the brush and then it's going to be very clean. Less than a minute left. No. Yeah, okay. So, so that works. So 15 past one, we continue. Have a nice lunch. Recording. Right, so before we, we will continue working with the, with the shape here, uh, our landscape here, and importing it into Blender, I'll just show you a few things that I wanted to kind of touch upon before the, we had the lunch break. I just spent like uh, 15 extra minutes polishing this guy out, adding some shoulders and, and so on, um, just just to increase the the polygon count uh, a little bit. So right now I'm I'm slightly above uh, 200,000 vertices with this one, um, and it's basically yeah I I just <clears throat> used exactly the same. Uh, techniques or, or or same things that I've I've been showing you, um, and 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 just kind of tried to build something something with this shape. So now, uh, when I, for instance, try to move this horn up, it's really laggy for me. Like it's really hard for me to 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 move it up. And I'm not even moving it. Oh yeah, I'm slightly moving it up, but it's really hard for me to to move this this whole thing up. And that's because I have way too many vertices. Wait, so, so something's happening with the chat. Oh, Leonard is writing here. Just surface. So uh, everyone who has um, who who has the landscape as a surface. Uh, do the duplicate border, project to C plane, loft, cap, everything that I've shown you during the tutorials uh, last week. So coming back to here, I've, I've slightly polished it, uh, like polished a few seams here and there. Like if I zoom in, you can kind of still see, you know, that it's a little bit messy, but most of it is kindly slightly polished for for the face area but uh, where i have the the, the shoulders and, and the collarbone um, and also for the back muscles i i didn't polish it just just to show you you know usually i have this kind of resolution when i'm working with the form and i never go beyond this resolution this kind of bulkiness uh, until I'm, I'm sure that the form is absolutely fine and I don't want to change anything about it. And then I start coming in with, with the pinch tool or the flatten tool and kind of start uh, describing, creating, create, creating the surfaces on top of my form, right? So um, distinguishing what, what kind of surfaces I'll have. For instance, here I see uh, a little bit of a whoopsie. So I'll just come in here with a pinch, just smooth it out. So the, the more you use it, the, the faster you're gonna become. Oh, what's, what's, what happened here? A little bit messy on, on, on this part. For instance, here, that this area right here is, you know, something happened. I will come in with a smooth tool, smooth it out, come back in with a pinch tool, pinch it up, and you can see how it cleans everything up. Okay, so we have a, a guy, right? And the guy has 240,000 vertices. Way too much for, you know, it's unnecessary to have that many vertices for this uh, particular uh, surface uh, or, or this particular geometry. So I'll show you how to reduce the, uh, the mesh. And this is much, much stronger than Rhino's reduce mesh because Rhino also has reduce mesh option. Decimate mesh in Blender is much, much better. So 
I'll hit tab. So tab changes my sculpt mode to my edit mode. So you can see here in the top left corner, now I'm in the edit mode. And if I were to zoom in, you can see all of the polygons that, that, that I'm working with. So here, for instance, in the back, not a lot, but in the front, there's, there, there's quite, quite a few. And in most cases, I don't need that, you know, this, this amount of resolution. It's, it's unnecessary to have that much. Wait, the chat is saying something. Let me check. Uh, can you import the Rhino mesh to Blender in order to get a nicer mesh reduction? Yes, ab uh, absolutely, you can. And I do that all the time. Um, it didn't do that for me. So tab didn't change it to edit mode or what? So then you can just go here to the top left corner and instead of using the sculpt mode, which is this, just choose edit mode here if tab doesn't work. Did it work? Okay. So edit mode has a lot of stuff that can, can be quite useful. Um, right now, uh, by default in edit mode, we are in vertex editing. Uh, how do I say this? So edit mode has sub modes. You can edit the vertices, you can edit the edges, and you can edit the faces, right? And you can switch between those with, uh, uh, with your, not number pad, but uh, the row of numbers that you have on your keyboards. So one is for vertices, two is for edges, three is for faces. This is purely for selection purposes. And there is like a bunch of things that you can do with it. Uh, but it's, it's not about that. Right now we're all about sculpting. So let's uh, jump back to, um, to, to vertex mode, which is one, where we were. And I want to reduce the amount of vertices. So that's decimate mesh, right? Um, I will hit A button, button A which is shortcut for all. So it selects all of the vertices that I have. And then here in the top, I'll go to where you have, uh, right next to edit mode, where you have view, select, add, mesh, vertex, edge, face, UV. I will go to mesh, clean up, which is um, almost the last one, one before the last one. So mesh, clean up. Decimate geometry. I'll select this and nothing happens, right? But here in the bottom left, you see decimate geometry like thingy pop up. Uh, bottom left, right next to, in my case, it's right next to rip region uh, tool. Decimate geometry. If you click on it, this uh, menu, small menu will pop up where the only thing that we care about right now is ratio where i can uh, specify you know how how many vertices to leave so if my ratio is let's say 0 0.2 it's going to leave 20 percent of vertices so right now i have um 240,000, so it's going to leave 48,000, around 48,000 vertices so 0 0.2, I hit enter, and I wait for, for a bit. But um, much, the density is much less now. If you wanna hit it again with decimate, you can, but uh, I think like, as, as long as you're sketching, having everything below 100,000 uh, vertices is, you know, it's unnecessary to decimate it even more. So now if I were to hit tab button again or go back to sculpt mode, you can see that visually uh, the geometry almost hasn't changed. Well, the seams are not that crisp anymore, but I can easily come back to them with, with the pinch, right? 
with, with, with pinch and fix them up again. Oh, that's, that's a bad, uh, stronger. I mean, bigger, not stronger. With pinch, I can fix the seams again with a pinch and, and kind of, you know, work, continue working with this. But that is uh, decimate mesh. Cool? Very, 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 very strong tool to know. So again, to repeat things, <clears throat> object mode, in object mode, you move stuff around, objects, you move objects around, you scale them up, uh, rotate them, and, you know, kind of arrange them. In edit mode, you change, you know, the, the, the vertices, you add vertices, you change the edges, you introduce cuts and, and, and stuff like that. <clears throat> and then in sculpt mode, you sculpt, right? And uh, you, you kind of switch back and forth between these three modes. We don't care about other modes at this stage. I switch between them on the left-hand side where it says sculpt mode here. I can switch to edit or object mode or the shortcut to quickly go into edit mode and back from edit mode is the tab key. So if I hit tab, it changes to edit, hit, hit tab again, switches back to, to um, the sculpt. And now if I were to, for instance, use the grab uh, tool, let me just increase its size. Like now deforming this whole thing, it's much, much easier, right? I can easily like take, I don't know which part, let's say this part, kind of deform it. F figure out a new, new proportion for it. And uh, by the way, I, I don't use symmetry anymore, so it's gonna be a, a little bit <laughs> a little bit messy. Forgot to use the symmetry. Cool. So every time when you see that it's starting to lag up, just use um, decimate mesh. Hit it with decimate mesh. Clean up the edges again, and then you're 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 gonna be good to go. Um, decimate mesh really works well with preserving uh, information. So here I just wrote down the date in the bottom of the shape before we hit it with decimate mesh. And you can see like it kept the, 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 the numbers quite, quite well. Huh. So we have that going on. Let me check the chat again. Yep. Uh, seems like everything is clear. Um, moving on. So for instance, this guy, let's say I want to 3D print this, this one out, right? Just to show you the strength of sculpting, uh, the sculpt tool. I'll go to file. Well, you can save your files, but uh, I'll, I'll just export it as an STL. STL. Um, I'll just do it like choose desktop and I'll just call it test, uh, test print. I don't care about anything here. I'll just hit export STL. I'll fix everything in Cura. So now let me open up Cura. And you don't need to do this. Uh, this is not to, you know, th this is not a part of the tutorial. This is just for me to show you that the geometry that we get from here is actually pretty clean, even though we, we do have a few questionable things here. Uh, where are they? Eh. You know, questionable things <laughs> that I didn't have the time to fix. Um, but other than that, this is a pretty, pretty clean geometry. Um, let's, let's wait for Cura to load up and then uh, I'll, I'll show you how, how it would look like when it's sliced up while it's loading. Um, 
let me uh, where, 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 where was it let me save this one day 12 b save no save file I'll, I'll I'll just try to find uh where, which one was it I think it was day five no oh this the, these models by the way are from my tests you know wh when I was learning how to use uh, how to sculpt you know I, I I tried doing a brick um I'm, I'm just trying to find one piece that I have 3d printed out was that earlier before no that's a horse um open D3. So I was doing like, no, that's a flute. I was doing one model per day j just to kind of learn. Oh, that's an orca. And I've, <laughs> this is actually fun. I can, uh, wait, can I do that? Oh no, I need to go to edit mode or, or was it pose mode? I think it was pose mode. Will you rotate? No, you just crash. Ooh. Okay, let's not do that. Rotate. I can rotate this <laughs> small around and kind of make make him flap. Just wanted to see, you know, what what um, if if I sculpt out something and you know kind of use a te texture paint on it is it possible to also kind of make the dolphin swim that's not a dolphin um that's an orc <laughs> anyway but i'm trying to find um that's the seven the six no the eight no, three. Oh my God. You, they tend. Ah, oh, thank God. Okay. So this guy here, right? Um, we will be talking about this guy for, for, you know, later on when I'll show you the next stages that you need to do. But for instance, this guy, I just wanted to see, you know, how it looks like when you uh, print him out and wait. Um, don't know if you can see see it that well. Um, pretty good, right? You can see all of the scenes and so on. So even something that is quite sketchy from, uh, also it was pink, I just painted it black. Uh, so something sketchy from, uh, straight up from uh, Blender can be printed out with you know, without any and any problems. Uh, let me jump back to my my screen. Go to Cura. Um, Prusha i3 Mark III. Where's my test print? Drag it here. Very very teensy teensy small. So I'll scale it up to be let's say 10 centimeters in height. And maybe a little bit bigger, something like that. And notice how, like, this is for, I, I'm showing this because it's, oh, how the heck do I rotate in Cura? Yeah, let me change to a mouse. Oh my. <sighs> So 
So in, in most of your cases, it's going to be, you know, you, you'll need some sort of a flat surface at the bottom for, for the print to stick. And uh, I've already showed you this, but I'll just repeat it because it's a pretty important thing. Uh, you just move your model into the build plate and that, that's it, <laughs> right? Uh, it's, it's going to start printing from, from this scene here. Uh, so the surface area is going to be larger. And then let's see, quality, quality 0 0.2, that's fine, 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 all of this is fine. That's good, that's good, everywhere that's good, brim. Uh, in this case, we don't need the brim, it would be a skirt, uh, slice. There we go, eight hours, 39 minutes to print. Let's hit the preview. And that's how it would look like printed. So you can see like those very thin areas right here. They would just simply wouldn't be 3D printed out. <clears throat> um, and most of it, I think, is, is, is kind of fine. Of course, you would need support for the chin and support for the eyes but it's, it would be pretty easy to remove them. And yeah, uh, by the end, you would have a pretty decent print. Cool? See if it's cool. Well, I'm changing the, changing the mouse to back to my trusted tablet. So I will talk about this guy again, because this is the only model which I've reused, uh, not reused, but completely remodeled in, uh, as NURBS polysurface, as a single closed NURBS polysurface. And the characters that I've sent to you last week all had this helmet on them. But that helmet was uh, meshed not from here, but rather from a NURBS polysurface. Um, I, uh, we'll be talking about that in a bit. Because here in, in, in Blender, you can kind of remesh it as you know a, a clean mesh topology, but you can't do a polysurface. And we do need it to be a polysurface. OK. Um, file. Eh. For now, let's let's ignore this and let's work with this. Wait, I need to double check if chat has questions. Oh my God, uh, chat. Hello, chat, come on. Cool, everyone says cool, uh, that's good. I think so too. Um, moving on to this. So the thir first thing to do with, with this landscape is to move it um, to zero, zero, zero coordinate, right? So, oh, don't do that. So I'll select the landscape. Come on, I'll, fine, back to the mouse. So annoying. I never use a tablet for Rhino modeling and I never use a mouse for Blender modeling. So, and, and also my, um, my laptop only has two USB ports, and one of them is used by the microphone, so it's, it's fun to see the least. Okay, um, so this landscape, I will move to zero, zero, zero position, because in your case, the landscape might be somewhere here, and you want it to be located here. So looking at the landscape, um, I will find its uh, bottom left corner, this one right here, move, enter, and I'll choose to, uh, to move it from its bottom left corner, right? Right here. I'll click it. I'll type in zero and hit enter. So when I type in zero, it moves to zero, zero, zero coordinates. So then I can just uh, type in ZS for zoom selected, zoom, into, uh, zoom back into it. I'll give you uh, a few seconds to, to, to do it. Basically, you want your landscape to be somewhere near the 
zero 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 point of the world. Axel says, no, Albert says, he can't see my screen. What did I do? I moved this landscape or wait, can you still not see my screen? Uh -huh. Oh, okay, uh, it's lagging for Albert. Uh, so you, you just take your landscape and you just move it to zero, zero, zero coordinate. Uh, so, so that it's somewhere near, or ideally it's right on the zero, zero, zero coordinate, nothing more. <clears throat> Once you've done that, then you create a mesh out of it. So I just select my landscape, I type in mesh, enter, um, in this case, you want to see more polygons. So I'll just choose more polygons, hit OK, and then hit Delete to get rid of the poly surface so that it's, it's only a mesh that's left. So you should see something like this. Not, definitely not a clean mesh, but we don't care. Come. I selected the corner. I when I used move, yeah, I, I select the corner from which I move and I type in zero and hit enter. And then mesh it. Everyone has a mesh? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Super. Select the mesh, type in what? Valid mesh, close double precision polygon mesh? Question mark. I want to see more yups. Okay, super. So we can, uh, we can continue. Um, to, to work in between the programs for meshes, um, the, the usually use either .3ds format or .stl format or .obj format. If you care about uh, materials and textures and UV mapping, then you use 3ds or obj. If you don't care about that stuff, you use stl. Um, in this case, just you know to mix things up a bit, I will export this as an OBJ. So I'll select the mesh, export, enter, to desktop, whatever. I'll call this file landscape, uh, yeah, just landscape one or whatever. I'll change this to uh, file type to OBJ object and I'll hit save. Then this menu will pop up, OBJ export options, where it's going to ask me, you know, a, a bunch of a bunch of things. Geometry, formatting, naming, and mesh. Um, honestly, wait, let me double check, but no, there's nothing that I want to change here. So we just hit okay. We, we don't care. We hit OK. So we have our OBJ file. OK. Close that. Yeah, sure, I'll save it. I've welded, unwelded, it doesn't matter. There's, there's one more thing that I want to show you and I'll be showing it on, on this guy or actually I can just open, where's my, don't see if, 
on this guy. <clears throat> so there's one more thing that I want to show uh, before we start messing around with, uh, with our landscape. And it's going to be, here we have dynamic topology, right? So we're changing the amount of vertices according to how many, um, how many we need basically for the brushes to work. But what if we already have a certain mesh, right? And we don't, and, and we want to kind of clean it up, uh, not necessarily clean it up, but we want to make sure that it's a closed mesh, but it's all kind of weird and wonky. Uh, then what we can do instead of using decimate mesh or instead of uh, hitting it with uh, dynamic topology and this uh, simplify tool, instead of doing that, we can use remesh, which is in the top um, menu, uh, right next to that dynamic topology drop down. there's a remesh button. For remesh to work, we need to untick dynamic topology. So that one needs to be unticked. And then we click on remesh. And here it's going to remesh it according to some sort of a voxel size, right? If you choose the voxel size to be too big, let me, let me show you what happens, 0 0.5 meters. I know that this, this guy is like two meters, not two, but like three by four meters, right? So 0 0.5 meters is way too big. But if I hit remesh, this is what kind of a, you know, not topology, but what, what kind of detail I'm left with, right? This is the better case. If this number is too small, it will just crash, right? Because it will create too many polygons. But the way it works, let's try 0 0.1 and hit remesh. The way it works, it uses a unified step size for all of the polygons, right? So now I'm in edit mode so, so that you can see the polygons, right? So it uses a unified step size to, uh, to, to, to create polygons, to re rebuild it with, 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 with new topology. Uh, so 0 0.1 was way too low still. So I need to undo this. The only way you can come back is by undoing. I'll go to remesh and give it like 0 0.02 and hit remesh. Okay, so now this doesn't seem that bad. If I were to zoom in, you could still see that all of my sharp seams are gone. But at least now, um, you know, everything is, is, everything has a very, um, not seamless, but um, it has the same density through and through, right? So, so this whole shape, if I were to look at it just from the front view, this whole shape has a very unified, I guess the word is unified, very unified density. So that's uh, remeshing with, uh, with, with, with uh, the, the remesh tool. Okay, that's, that's one thing that I wanted to show. Let me uh, start the recording again. It's now enough of, of, of this guy. That one's done. Um, I'll just, create a new file and I will just choose uh, either sculpting or general doesn't matter. I guess uh, I'll, I'll, I'll choose general. I don't save. <clears throat> so we have just a new file. As per usual, wait, are we recording? Yes, we are. As per usual, um, I will delete the cube delete the light, delete the camera. This is something that 
you will be doing a lot, deleting the default cube. There's even a meme about it. Um, and now we have that OBJ file that we have exported. So I'll go to file, import OBJ, wave front OBJ. I'll find it in my desktop. And hit OK. It's kind of here, but it's it's all rotated weird. So that means that uh, I have imported it uh, with bad settings. I mean, I, I can rotate it without any problems. Well, like that. But instead, let's import it import it properly. So just delete the guy if it imports uh, bad. No, you don't use the material file. You just use the OBJ file. We didn't create a material for the landscape now, did we? So import OBJ again. And this time, let's see what kind of settings there are, right? Because I can select this OBJ, but there on the right-hand side, you can see you have forward and up, right? And here it says Y is up, minus Z is forward. No, uh, forward is going to be, well, I know that Z is going to be for sure up, and then automatically it changes forward to minus X. That's it. I just want to say that Z is up, not Y is up. I hit import OBJ again, and now it imports cleanly. So we have our, our material here, uh, not material, sorry, our uh, object here. Can you show how you export it as an OBJ again? I have, I have closed the file. Wait. Keep attention and do do it together with me. That's fine if it's all black. Um, you select the, uh, the object in Rhino. Type in export. You choose OBJ as a file type. And just give it a name. And hit save. And hit OK. And you'll have the OBJ file. Um, if it's all black, that's fine. Um, in Blender, let's go to, wait, let, let me try and make it black as well. Hmm, wonder why I can't make it black, but I, I, I know what you mean. It, it, it does like to become black. Well, whatever, if, if it's black, then you can just, uh, oh, I know. Uh, is it like that? If it's like that, that means you're using render. Yeah, exactly. If it's like that, that means you're using rendered setting. Instead, use solid and then expand this, choose matcap. So viewport shading matcap, choose a material. And instead of color by material, you choose color by object. And then it's not going to be um, black anymore. Okay, so we have uh, our landscape here. And if I were to look at it in the edit mode, so either changing this to edit mode in the top left corner or just hitting the tab button, I can see all of the, all the, all of the vertices here. And honestly, this is like, okay. Uh, for, for something like this, we don't need more uh, more vertices. So we can immediately jump into sculpting mode. So I'll switch this to sculpting mode. 
turn on dynamic topology. Don't forget for dynamic topology to change the detailing to brush detail. And you can start going to town with it, right? I don't know what I'm what, what I'm drawing. <laughs> but but you know, you, you 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 can start messing around with it. Um honestly, like it's it's hard to see the you know how, how big you're your your drawing and You only have object mode, no other modes. Uh, okay. Um, what if you select the landscape? Like, so, so select the landscape? Okay. So, so other modes are per object. Oh, there we go. Tobias decided to join us. That's good. Oh, by the way, the review, not review, but the, uh, the, the, the desk crit tomorrow is mandatory. So those of you who haven't signed up yet, please do so. You know, the help list thing here. Uh, wait, where is it? Here. Those of you who haven't signed up, uh, sign up. It's, it's, uh, you, you, you can't choose not to have it. It imports really weird. That, come on guys. That, that doesn't say anything to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I don't know what toggle around it means. Uh, and if you, if you're in the edit mode and you zoom out, the vertices are becoming bigger, right? So it starts looking black. Zoom in, the vertices, you know, it, it's, it's all, it's all relative. And Leonard. It's like it's not there. Uh, yeah. Time to stop the record. Now we're back live. Um, now we need to make sure that it's displaying properly, right? So in some uh, in some cases, uh, it's showing up black, isn't it? Say yes or say yeah. Just say yes for those who yes. And I believe okay. So I will be expanding the material uh, here in the top, um, what's that side, right? In the top right corner where we have our uh, display settings here, right? I will choose the solid display, which is the, just the white circle. Make sure that that is chosen. Expand the table down the shading table. So now you see something like this, right? Then go to matcap rather than studio lighting. Go to matcap lighting. Like that. And where it says color, instead of material, use object. Did it solve it? Okay. 
from experience i'll just uh wait wait a little bit to to to, to, to see if it really solved it mm -hmm. so the reason why this happens is because um obj format as we import it it doesn't have a material attached to the geometry i mean the material file for the geometry is empty and or even worse it's written by rhino and blender cannot read it so what it says is that oh yeah i cannot read it it's black right so instead of saying that shade it by the material that you have we specify that shade it just by the object color right um, so in, in, in this case, like disregard the material, but use the object color. So we have that, and then let's choose some sort of a, I don't know. No, this is not nice. Oh, this is too, too fancy. No. Yeah, honestly, I always kind of work with these two. I'll just use the red again. <clears throat> okay, so we have our landscape properly properly positioned and so on um let me actually while we're that or no I, I will show you with another form so now let's create a box right shift a mesh cube And it's going to be created right, you know, in, in the zero, zero, zero coordinates right here. That's our cube. This cube right here is two by two by two meters big, right? So it's as high as a human or well, high, uh, slightly higher than the average person and um, two by two meters in, in width and length. Everyone has a cube. Who needs me to show it again? <clears throat> okay. So this should give you a reference of, over how big the actual, you know, that site is that, that you're working on. And now for this cube, let me just show you the, the, the basics, what you can do in the object mode, right? So for this cube on the left hand side corner, you have move, rotate and scale. So move, if I remember correctly, it's G, right? So you can use G to move, but uh, it's a little bit clunky. So I just prefer using the move tool because it gives us the, you know, that gumball that Rhino has. And we can just move it. And we can kind of move it into some sort of a position. Uh, I'm not sure about snapping. I never, <laughs> honestly, like since, since I'm using Blender for kind of freeform stuff, I nev nev never bothered with snapping. It's for sketching, so I don't think snapping is necessary. Never needed to use snapping in Blender. So that's move. Um, for rotation, I also would, well, actually for rotation, I prefer to use uh, the, the, the R key, R, so it rotates. So by default, if you just set it, you know, if you just click R, it's going to rotate according to the view. Right, but you then can select uh, you you as you're rotating with R, you can click X for instance. It, so it's only going to rotate the, around the X axis. You can click on Y, it will rotate only around Y axis or Z, only on around Z axis. Right, actually pretty useful. Um, let me just hit Escape. So I'm 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 not. I just wanted to show you how to rotate, but I don't want to actually rotate it. And now um, I will be scaling the cube, right? So there are a few ways of how to, on how to do it. One is by 
changing the dimensions of the cube. So see here where, where, I, where we have that kind of hidden menu on the, what you might call it, yeah. on the top right corner, uh, that, that small arrow, if I click on it and drag it out, you can see the transform uh, menu here. So I can change the dimensions of the cube, right, to, to, to something else. So I'll just go for, uh, I don't know, let's say five meters in Z, uh, 10 meters in Y, and 10 meters in, in X. It doesn't really matter. This is just, you know, to, to, to show you a few examples. So I have a cube. Or you can uh, instead, if you don't care about the dimensions that much, you just want to have the kind of the, the, the scale right. Not, not the scale right, but if you don't care about the, the, the correct scale, you can just use the S button or scaling widget here on the left hand side, right? So scale, the S short for scale. And then if you just want to scale it in one direction, you just uh, use X, Y, or Z, right? So you click X to scale it in around the X, uh, axis, Z to scale it in height, and Y to scale it in y, around Y axis. So many ways to, to change the, the size of, the, of this box. Let me quickly show you, you can shift click to do it in two dimensions, cool. Yeah, yeah. But what, whatever, usually I just scale it in one dimension and then kind of scale it again in the other. Um, one more thing is I want to show you at least one modifier uh, today, basically to, to, to just explain how they work. Um, I can't freely rotate or scale. It's locked to origin. No. Hello? Hello. Hi. Um, so my site, I can, it's just zooming in on the, on the edge of the site plan. I can't go to the square. <laughs> The um, edge of the side. Line. Are you talking about this edge? Yeah. And everything is kind of scaling around that edge. Yeah. Uh, if I'm rotating, it's just focused on that point on Origo, like the zero point zero. <laughs> Origo is origin, right? Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. I can't go to this to the square. What am I supposed to call it? I get the cube. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> what, you can't go to the cube. No, I can't zoom in. If I zoom in, it's just going to the edge of the site. Ah, okay, okay. Um, try doing this. Wait, oh, don't do that. Um, in the, on the right-hand side, mm -hmm. select the cube. Yeah. Try going to view. View. Mm -hmm. Um, should I change some numbers there, or what am I supposed to do? No, oh, oh, I, I was waiting until you will say I'm, I'm there. Uh, <laughs> and, I'm there, so sorry. <laughs> okay, and, and, and try choosing lock to object. Um, View lock, lock to, well, first of all, is lock to object set to certain? No, it says nothing, should I choose landscape one? No, no, not necessarily, but I, I thought that maybe you're locking to, to the landscape. If it's not setting, uh, if it's not saying that the view is locked to an object, then maybe this not. is uh, fine. Okay, what you can do is, uh, let me see. Um, okay, so try, let's minimize this. So select the cube. The cube is selected, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, in the top left corner, go to view. Okay. And choose frame selected. Yes. Oh, that worked. 
Okay, so, so now. Yeah. now if you rotate the camera, does it rotate around the center of the cube? Uh, yeah. Okay, super. So, so we're back. <laughs> okay. We're, we're back to normal. So, okay. so it, it's basically the same thing as, uh, uh, wait, let me scroll down here. Uh, so it's basically the same thing as Zoom selected in Rhino. All right. The, the view frame selected. And frame all will just kind of zoom out and, and show you all, uh, all of the geometry. View frame selected will just show you the, the thing that you have selected. Okay. All right. So, so that should, should okay. be. Yeah. Now, we unmute ourselves again. Yeah. <laughs> unmute. Uh, so now uh, we go to modifiers tab. So, but while we still have the cube selected, uh, we go to this uh, wrench tab, add modifier, and I will choose. So I showed you subdivision surface. Is there anything else I can? There's like booleans and so on. Oh, let's do two of them. I'll do subdivision surface. So this is how, is how the cube subdivides, right? With, with, uh, with one Catmull Clark pass. And if I increase the viewport subdivisions, this is two Catmull Clark passes, three, and, and so on, right? So I'll just give it like three passes, eh, maybe four four passes. So we have like a blob rather than a cube. Because that's how a uh, Catmull-Clark subdivision works. Uh, it, um, when, when you smooth something with Catmull-Clark, no, not smooth it, sorry. When you subdivide it, it also smooths. Um, because it, every vertice that is created, a new vertice that is created, will reference the average of surrounding vertices, meaning it's automatically kind of smoothing out by creating more and more geometry. Uh, it doesn't happen uh, for naked edges. Naked edges stay sharp, but in our case, we don't have any naked edges, right? It, it's all enclosed. So it will, a cube with enough subdivisions will become a sphere. Uh, that makes sense. So we have one subdiv uh, subdivision for the cube. And let's add one more modifier, uh, which is going to be Boolean. Boolean. So now this is the moment where you make sure that the cube, uh, well, it's not a cube, but our form it's kind of sticking into the landscape at least a little bit, right? I will just move it down just slightly so that it's kind of the landscape and it are intersecting because we're, we're going to use Boolean union on these two guys. Okay. So we have our landscape here and we have our cube here and the cube has uh, two modifiers applied to it. Uh, the Catmull Clark and the Boolean modifier. So uh, for the Boolean modifier, we need to choose what kind of operation it's going to do, either Boolean difference, intersect union or union. Uh, so I will choose Boolean union, like that. And then I will choose an object uh, to unify it with, right? So it's going to be the landscape. So what I can do is I can just click on this pipette and click on the landscape. And now we have Rave Party. So this Rave Party happens because now a copy of the landscape uh, is, is kind of attached to the cube, but it kind of keeps the original landscape where, where, it, where it is, right? So there are like two geometries at the same place here where the landscape is. Let me start uh, applying the modifiers. So 
as modifiers are here right now, they're still not a part of the geometry. They're not locked to the geometry. <clears throat> they're still, uh, let's say, think of them as Photoshop layers that are uh, being stapped, stacked on top of each other. Right now, recording. Yeah, so we're back. Um, here, I assume all of you have this rave party going on. And that rave party happens because we have the cube with attached landscape to it, and we have the original landscape, right? Uh, so the landscape is kind of duplicated. If I were to uh, apply, and actually let's do that. I was talking about layers, uh, like Photoshop layers that you merge uh, in, in, into one image. Uh, we'll be doing that for, for this, uh, you know, cube uh, form. Uh, so first I'll apply the catmull clark subdivision. So now it's part of the geometry. It's not a modifier anymore. And then I will apply the Boolean operation. And now my cube, if I were to move it, is completely attached to the landscape. I don't know what's going on. Oh, there we go. Um, which means that I don't need the original landscape anymore. I can either hide it by clicking on this uh, eyeball here on the right hand side. I can hide it and maybe use it for something else later on. So um, let me actually just rename this uh, by double clicking on the name landscape empty. And I'll rename this uh, with blob with landscape, right? We have two geometries, one empty landscape and the other one where we have blob with the landscape. Okay, so I'll just leave uh, just blob with the landscape one opened or not opened, visible like that. And now we can get into it uh, with with, 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 uh, ah, come on, zoomed in too, too close, right, yeah, there we go. Uh, now we can get, get into it with uh, uh, sculpting tools. Sculpt mode. And then here you can do whatever you want. The first thing that I would do though, is I would hit it with, um, the, the simplify brush. Wait, let me just try and ah, uh, come on, give me, give me just, just give me the. There we go. I would just hit it with the simplify brush, with dynamic topology turned on. Dynamic topology on. Instead of relative detail, brush detail. Well, Frey, is, could it be that here in the bottom right corner, it says not blob with landscape, but rather landscape empty? That would mean that you're sculpting the wrong uh, form. You need to make sure that, you know, when, when you're starting to sculpt, that you're selecting the, it's, it is the correct one. But what happens when you change it back to object mode? If you change it back to object mode, does it, so the blob is not, it comes back. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, um, what about the modifiers? Did you apply all of the modifiers? And it's just gone then, huh? Okay, what about the edit mode? Wow. 
what the f um, okay in edit mode hit a to select all of the vertices go to mesh clean up um, fill holes then go to mesh clean up uh, no wait where was it oh my god uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm, I'm trying to remember now no it should be all fine um, First one, solidify wireframe, uh, beautify faces intersect. There needs to be, oh my God, come on, no, mesh, normals. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So also go to mesh, normals, Recalculate outside. After you've done that, go to sculpt mode. And there's no way that it's not there. Like the Oh my God, okay. Why is this so hard? Okay. Jump back to object mode. Jump back to object mode. Just uh, shift A and do a mesh sphere. I, I don't know what's 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 uh, what's up with that. Perhaps the boolean operation messed up. Just do 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 what I do. Shift A mesh. UV sphere. Move it to correct position. Oh yeah, and the, the delete the, the landscape, fuck that. Um, I'll just choose landscape empty, choose my sphere. Just wanna finish the freaking, uh, come on. View, frame selected, what is that? Sphere, so, so just move the sphere so that half of it is sticking out of the landscape. Scale it up so that it's big, like that. Select the landscape itself, add modifier, and uh, I'm going to be using landscape empty. I've deleted the old one. Landscape empty, add modifier, boolean, yeah, uh, union with pipette tool, I will choose my sphere, right? I'll hit apply and disable the preview of the sphere. So now my landscape empty actually has a sphere boolean into it. Then if I go to sculpt mode, Two out of two, it, it keeps working. Like Boolean operations sometimes don't work. Redid all the steps, but it still doesn't work. Uh, 
um, question. Uh, how how many is is it just Frey and uh, uh, Jacob? Jacob? I don't know how to pronounce your name. Sorry. Um, is it two students or more uh, who have this problem? Doesn't work for Maria as well. Okay, tell you what. Um, let me show you another another way to do it then. So this one is the shitty way, but if if Boolean doesn't work, then you can do it this way as well. Um, we have right now. I have a landscape and a sphere, and these two are uh, separated. And I will even delete the modifier. There we go. So no modifiers, no nothing, just the sphere and just the landscape, right? I will select both of them by just either using shift key and selecting both of them here in the, um, let's call it the layer tab. It's not the layer tab, but let's just call it the layer tab uh, by selecting them here. Or I can just type in a, and it's automatically going to select all of the objects in the scene. Then I will right click and choose join. So these two guys are joined up into one shape, right? It should, uh, like, in, in, in the top right corner, it should say landscape. Um, Lands just landscape empty, right? It, it, it doesn't have any additional geometry. So this, are you kidding me? Still doesn't show in sculpt mode. Okay, uh, you guys will need to Google that. I have no idea why, you know, uh, why it happens for you. Uh, some sort of a mystery. Just uh, Google that, you know, after joining or uh, like, we, we can't see anything in sculpt mode or I don't know. I'll, I'll try Googling after the course as well. But basically, to, to finish off, if Boolean operations do, don't work correctly, then you can jump into sculpt mode with just joint geometry. Notice that if I join the geometry, it's shit here, right? Uh, the, the sphere is sticking inwards and it's, it's bad. Daniel, later. Uh, once we have the questions and answers session. Um, I just want to really, really want to finish this up. So the, the, the sphere is sticking inwards into the landscape, um, which, which means that all of these parts here, if I were to try and sculpt on them, let me actually show, show you this. This is a, a, a very important thing that I wanted to come to. If I try to sculpt on this, See how that, that seam really messes, mess, messes up? And if I try to smooth it out, it's, it's, you know, nothing will get that seam working. Because this is a non-manifold edge. It, it doesn't work. It, it treats these two geometries as two separate geometries, even though they're, they're joined up. But if I go to remesh, well, if I turn off dy dynamic topology first, I need to do that. If I go to remesh and I choose that my voxel size is like, this is like 10 centimeters for a 200 meter landscape. So maybe that's a little bit too much. But if I choose voxel size to be, let's say half a meter, 0 0.5 meters, I hit remesh. See how now, it, it, it remeshed the geometry so that the bottom of the sphere is gone and everything is joined into a single closed mesh. 
So that's what you can do with it to clean it up. And then of course, uh, kind of get, get back in there with, with flatten and, oh, sorry, dynamic topology on. You can get, get back in there with flatten or even better with pinch. Uh, let's make it smaller a little bit. Clean up the seam like that. Pinch is weak. There we go. So we clean up the seam and kind of start smoothing it out and, and so on. So we, we can start working on it. Um, right. Questions. Now, now, now it's time for questions. Can you remiss just a smaller section? Oh, remesh, uh, the, just, just the smaller section of the object. Uh, well, no, <laughs> no, no, you can't. You can import it as two. No, <laughs> I, I, I will go for a no. Honestly, uh, I, I think there might be a, a way to go about it, but I think like using remesh with high voxel size and then uh, like hitting it with the, with the decimate mesh, cleanup, decimate geometry, um, ratio 0 0.1. Hello? Wait, what? Enter, come on. Oh, right, uh, so for decimate to work, we need to select all of the vertices. Like, basically it asks, uh, it needs us to select the vertices that we're going to decimate, right? So decimate geometry again, this time it actually counts. And there we go, so that's with ratio 0 0.1. I can come back in, 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 in Blender, oh, sorry, in Sculpt mode and continue working with this. And now it's much, much faster. Um, okay, so chat, chat, chat. Uh, da, da, da. Daniel, you had a, okay, uh, I'll, I'll look at the picture just in a second. Um, I have another question. Can you split it, remesh it, and jo then join it? No, uh, because it will not match up. This, the seam will not match up anymore. Uh, so, so that won't work. If you want to increase or decrease the resolution, uh, you can with, um, with, with, with uh, the simplify brush but it will not solve uh, these kind of non-manifold edges for you. Uh, you need to remesh the whole form together, all together. Are we using Blender in this project as a sketching tool, something that is quicker to use than Rhino? Absolutely, yes. Uh, because right now the, the next step is you have printed out or, or you're printing out the first, like the second, pass at the concept and now it's time to actually think about you know how how are you going to merge it with the landscape and what kind of form are you actually going to use so last friday not last friday friday before that uh you needed to do um what you might call it the the, the the metaphor workshop where you sketched by hand this time you're kind of doing the same thing only at the next level you're sketching uh, with in, in 3D. And that sketch that you're going to have, you know, once you're finished with the sketch, that sketch is going to be used uh, to remodel uh, a poly surface on it, right? So now you're sketching everything incorrect 
dimension in correct size with spatial uh, sequences in mind, right? So we are slowly moving towards something that is in uh, that that has the correct um, the correct scale as 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 a building. I made an elephant. Um, okay. More more chat. More chat. More chat. Where is freaking Zoom is so obnoxious. Uh, so Daniel sent a picture. So this means that everywhere where you have this thing happening, <laughs> the, the, this everywhere where you have this this kind of problematic happening uh, is a open scene where where the mesh doesn't align properly. Um, we will need to look into it. How the heck did it print out for you? I have no idea. That's exactly why we wanted to pr print first to. Um, so Daniel, if if you first import it, import this kind of structure, oh, I can draw on it. Hmm. If you for, first import the the, the the structure separately into Blender, and it looks okay, then try uh, simply remeshing it. Im immediately going into sculpting mode sculpt mode and just remeshing just uh, you know the, this this structure that 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 you have here maybe that will produce a closed mesh because uh stuff like this happens when you have an open mesh um so so maybe that will help if that doesn't work then we will need to look deep cl closer into it you know look, look closer into how to solve it It did say that it's closed in Rhino, but I, I remember that you had problems closing it in Rhino, didn't you? No, that, oh, it's a new model. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, uh, if, if, if remeshing doesn't, doesn't work, we will uh, take a look and uh, we'll see how we can solve this. But uh, usually remeshing should should kind of take care of it. Um, and any any more questions before we end for today? I guess I need to explain what what needs to be done now, right? Uh, so now it's all about the landscape condition, right? And and how does your building meet the landscape? So just like Daniel did with with his form where he imported his, uh, his form and used Boolean union uh, with the landscape, uh, you can, or not can, you should do the same thing with your own forms that, that you, you'll be, or ha have already printed out. So you import your, your thing, yeah, your, your building, and you'll start like merging it with the landscape and kind of solving how um how that building connects with the landscape and what happens you know in, in, in certain parts of, of 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 that connection is it clear or do i need to and explain it better okay that's that's fine i always think that i'm doing really poorly at explaining stuff so basically, you just um, work, you know, work into the, the the building, into the landscape. See, you know, how how you can kind of create shapes and and forms and what 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 can be done, and be very um, sculptural about it. 
because the thing that grasshopper lacks, I think, like rhino and grasshopper, is the sculptural way of thinking about form, right? Way of how to actually, you know, be, yeah, be, be sculptural about, about your architecture, rather than just technical, that everything is an arrangement of surfaces, blah, 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 and everything needs to be extremely precise. No, it's, it's not about that. Everything needs to have a, a certain, at, at first, everything needs to have a certain composition. Once the composition is solid, then it can be, uh, that it, then it needs to be technically precise and it needs to be, um, you know, functioning and, and so on. So we'll work on, on, on different lay, levels. But at, at first, it just needs to have a very clear, very thought out composition. Or else it's just going to be a brick that, that was plopped in the middle of the landscape without any, any thoughts. Right? Sort of a snail passed through this guy. And let me just do a snail real quick. I don't know how to do a snail. While I'm doing a snail, any more questions? That is definitely not a snail. I, 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 just a second. There we go. Perfect building. Tomorrow we're going to look into more, you know, how, how I, I'll, I'll talk about how I imagine um, these tools can be used for, for architectural design uh, and, and we'll get more in detail about it. Uh, but for now, I want you guys to just play with the tool as much as possible, uh, work, work with it and uh, try and come up with, uh, not come up with, but get, get accustomed to it so that it's easy to, for you to switch between you know different brushes and kind of you, you know what to expect from each brush so um you know start start sketching in 3d snake hooks for eyes yes of course snake hooks for eyes is there a way to make the brush not apply a change to the same area twice in one stroke like the brush in photoshop works oh yeah i, I know what you mean i'm not sure um Usually, I let's see. Mm, probably, in, uh, well, is there accumulate? There's the accumulate option. Never fucking mind. Um, what if that is turned off? So it by default it does that. It's just that here, uh, accumulate is turned on, meaning that with every pass, it goes deeper and deeper. And here, it, uh, as I'm just going through it over and over and over without lifting uh, the, 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 the pen, it will stop at a certain height. So it does that automatically. But if you want to not, uh, it to not do it, if you want it to go deeper and deeper with every, you know, with every pass, then it's uh, accumulated, it needs to be turned on. I never actually needed to, to use it. Um, let's see how it smooths out. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
instruction. Be careful with the smooth tool, as you can see. <laughs> it's it's a little bit too, you know. If you keep smoothing things, <laughs> nothing is gonna be left. Let me just go through this edge of the quarry, just with the smooth. Um, no more questions? Because we're, we're done for, for today with the tutorials. Actually, let me stop the recording. Uh,